Okay, I'm recording now. So we, we can upload it later. Okay. I can just get some the distance. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, I'll just go. Yeah, it's not come up with my Okay, sounds good. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you all for being here. Hello to everybody who's here online. Um, thank you for coming to our first GM. We're so excited. This is obviously a bit of a different format than we're used to, but we're so glad to have you all here. So today's GM, we are just going to be talking about the refugee crisis. So we're gonna kind of start off by going through what we do know. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to start with the Kahoot. I mean, Kahoot is a classic. You can never really miss there. Hi. Um, so here, we'll just start off with that. Also, we're gonna try with the technical difficulties. Sorry if I'm a little slow at stuff. So yeah, okay. Okay, there we go. And we can't get the sound to connect from here. Did we get the sound to connect last time? The sound didn't connect last time, did it? Right, you it's okay, you can play it in your head. Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Okay, so I guess they can see because here is just... Okay, we'll go. Oh, I'm gonna like another fifty seconds. So how many displaced people are there? Seventy nine point five million. Okay, super fun number, but scary. How many refugees are there around the world? Twenty-six million. Which source country has the most refugees? It's like this country what is how they wrote it. But. Okay. What percent of the world's population is displaced? Percent of refugees are women and children. Okay, 
50%. Sometimes it is greater than that depending on the country, but the average is 50%. Okay. What are the options for refugees? Encampment, dangerous journeys, urban displacement, and free immigration to a country of their choice. So all of those three options are threat, unfortunately, being Okay, true or false? Neighboring countries are always welcoming the Last one. What is the cause of mass enforceable displacement? wanted to start off with that just to kind of introduce the topic of the refugee crisis I know that that could be, like the facts are not fun at all kind of sad to read but just to kind of get a sense for what the refugee crisis looks like we're also going to quickly do a mentee um, activity so this is the code for it I will give everyone a second to type it in and then I'll like start that in a second. Menti.com. Um, it's just a general like survey kind of website. When you guys put in the code, does it like take you there? Or? Yeah, okay. All right, that's the code we have for Menti. And let me just pull that up. All right, so what comes to your mind when you hear the word refugee? So just any words, any kind of association that you have with it, anything you can think of. And you can also do like multiple su submissions on there as well. Displacement, fear, There's a lot of homelessness, a lot of emotions, so scared, fear, and trouble, camps, journeys. We have some of the causes, so economic crises, war, definitely. Okay, yeah, so a lot of emotion, a lot of causes, immigrant. All right, so what do you think are causes of mass and forceful displacement? So we kind of covered that a little bit in the Kahoot. Civil unrest, hello. Um, war, economic hardships, the environment. Unrest, the government, that's a big one. Genocide. Yeah. Human's rights, human's rights violations, yeah. 
So these are all, this is just kind of get to get a sense of how we all perceive the refugee crisis. How do we think about it? So what are the numbers? And then what are the causes for it? So today we're just going to talk about the refugee crisis from both of those perspectives, kind of just to raise awareness and educate more about it. The refugee crisis is definitely a human right crisis and it is definitely a global health issue but a lot of the times we talk about it as if it's really far removed so that's kind of why today i wanted to take a second to really look at the refugee crisis and talk about a few of these countries so just kind of summing up what the cuckoo is talking about so all of the numbers right so there's 79.5 million displaced people worldwide and that's by the end of 2019 so that's not taking into account this entire year, which honestly has really amplified the refugee crisis because of COVID. COVID is really rampant in refugee camps, and it's really a big part of this issue. So that's without taking COVID into account. Of those 79.5 million people, 26 million are refugees, 45.7 are internally displaced, and 4.2 million are classified as asylum seekers. And 40% are children. Um, the statistic varies on how many are women and children. But the top source countries are Syria. Syria is classified as the worst human rights crisis. Um, Venezuela with 3.7 million. Afghanistan with 2.7 million. South Sudan with 2.2 million. Myanmar with 1.1 million. And also just to kind of speak on this, we're gonna talk about a few of the main refugee crises, but that's not at all to discredit the refugee crises that are happening in so many other countries and so many other areas. So Somalia, Rohingya, Congo, all of these are still substantial issues. So yeah, this is kind of like a nice graphic that sums it all up. It's from the UNHCR. So the refugee crisis today. So we talked about some of the causes in the cuckoo, but the main causes are classified as war and civil war, human rights violations, economic hardship, and the environment and climate. And a lot of the crises that we're gonna talk about today, it's a combination of a lot of these causes. So really, what are the choices for refugees? You're faced with all these causes and you don't know what to do or where to go. So the number one choice is encampment, leaving your country, going to a neighboring country. Hopefully they have some sort of refugee camp set up there um, if the conditions are even tolerable. The second is urban destitution. So that's just trying to gain access into another country and kind of make it on your own. This is really difficult to do, especially because the infrastructure of other countries is just not set up to accommodate refugees. You don't speak the language and your degree might not transfer into another country. So this is also not a good alternative. And then the third is dangerous journeys, just to even make it out of your own country. And that's the image you see here. This is actually a raft of Syrian refugees that are trying to get over to Turkey. So yeah, just none of them are really good options. And then also like the underlying stuff, are all links to different resources and TED Talks that talk about these issues. So I'll send this out after the GM, and then you guys can look at that if you would like. So we're gonna talk about three refugee crises today, Syria, Afghanistan, and South Sudan. The refugee crisis in Syria is the largest refugee and displacement crisis of our time. Um, the cause of the Syrian refugee crisis is civil war and political conflict. Um, there's a lot of different external players that I won't get into. Um, if you'd like to learn more, I linked a video to this as well. But the situation in Syria was really amplified with international intervention. So Russia, the United States, and Saudi Arabia all entered Syria to, you know, for their own political gains. They had their own things to do. And they really just amplified the warfare in the area. Um, so there are currently 6.6 .6 million refugees, and then there are 12 million people in Syria that need humanitarian assistance. But healthcare centers and hospitals, schools, basic lifeline things um, are being targeted and destroyed both by the government and by the United States and Russia and Saudi Arabia. And then chemical weapons are also used by the Syrian government. So this is what Syria looks like today in some areas. And then the role of the United States. So the United States intervened under the Obama administration and continued, and they've ordered a lot of strikes. Um, one of, most of the refugees from Syria will go to refugee camps. So Zatari is actually the largest refugee camp in the world. 
It's located in Jordan and it's actually evolved into a permanent settlement. So this is a picture that honestly doesn't even capture the entire size of the refugee camp, but it's been there for the entirety of the Civil War. And we're now entering the 10th year. The second refugee crisis we're gonna talk about is Afghanistan. So Afghanistan is the second largest refugee crisis and the cause was fleeing violence for the past 40 years. Ever since it was invaded in 1979 by the Soviets, Afghanistan has been continuously invaded and destroyed by external forces. Um, a lot of refugees are forced to return to Afghanistan from Europe, Pakistan, and Iran. So that contributes to internal instability, not stability. And they're seen as economic migrants rather than refugees. And there's a really big lack of humanitarian aid in Afghanistan. A lot of people have just really chosen to look away, um, which is really sad. And then the third refugee crisis is South Sudan. South Sudan is now entering its sixth year of conflict with violence, deteriorating conditions. And we also see the combination of multiple causes here with flooding, food shortages, diseases. 80% of South Sudanese refugees are women and children. And then refugee camps are in neighboring countries, but unfortunately they're just not set up to be sustainable. Children only have access to primary education and there's very limited supplies. Um, there's a lot of talk about restructuring refugee camps, especially in South Sudan, but so far they have not really embarked on that. So I just kind of covered the top three refugee crises and Honestly, this all contributes to what is our perception of refugees? We all reside in the United States in some capacity. How do we perceive the refugee problem? And a lot of the common things that you'll hear is it's not our problem. So this is something that's far removed from us. It's another country's fault. You know, why don't they fix it instead? Why do we have to bear the burden? Um, the cause is underdeveloped or third world countries. That's really common you know, idea, if they had the infrastructure to handle it, they wouldn't have refugees in the first place. Another one is that they'll ruin our economy, which is a lot of the neighboring countries don't want to take in the refugees and they're not set up to take in such a mass influx of people. And honestly, another thing that amplifies it is just not the normalization, but the desensitization that we experience when we see so many of these crises. So this is actually a picture, um, it's a really sad picture but it's a Syrian boy who drowned um, on the beach while trying to make the journey out of Syria to Turkey, I believe. I could be wrong on that. And this picture circulated pretty much everywhere. I remember when it did. Um, and over time, you know, Syria has only worsened. So despite constant like media coverage, despite people's efforts to bring awareness to it, these situations just continue to amplify and get worse. So this is, a lot of the negative perceptions of refugees and the refugee crisis, we see it, we're like, what can we do anyways? But what oftentimes people forget is that refugees are, honestly, their countries are just like us. The United States especially has this perception of these countries as like third world countries. You even Google, like when I was making this presentation, I was Googling Afghanistan just to find some pictures of the country. Every single picture was a soldier or every single picture was some U.S. militant. That is such an inaccurate representation of the country and everything that it's been through. So I really wanted to include these pictures, like South Sudan has such a vibrant, rich culture. Afghanistan is absolutely beautiful. I have a lot of friends from Afghanistan. It's a beautiful country. And then in Syria too, this is like a before and after of what the area looked like. So I really wanna emphasize that oftentimes when you're looking at pictures of humanitarian crises, especially the refugee crisis, just a lot of pictures of destroyed buildings and people fleeing their homes. But it's important to remember that these countries are so beautiful countries and it's just really unfortunate that due to external forces and conflict and honestly just set up that way that this has happened, right? And a lot of these countries, um, Syria for an example, um, they were colonized, like if you're into history, you know, Syria was colonized, left, unstable, a dictatorship took over, and that's why you see the Syrian civil war, and that's why you see refugees. So it's just really important to remember these people and the countries that they come from. So who are refugees? It's really important to listen to their stories. So we talked about the numbers today. We 
talked about the crises, but the people are what really matter. So um, for an example, there is a documentary on Netflix. I highly recommend it. It's called The White Helmets. And this is a volunteer group of people in Syria, Syrian citizens, who are the first responders to a lot of the bombings and strikes in Syria. And they risk their lives every day to save people from underneath the rubble. So I really highly recommend watching that documentary. So refugees are heroes. You have Yusta Mardini. She's an Olympic swimmer. She was a Syrian refugee. And then I found a really like heartwarming story about Bizamani who fled Rwanda when he was two. And now he owns a business and is a prize winning singer. Honestly, um, also the perception of refugees is that they're helpless, they're destitute, um, but these are people just like us who are capable of everything that we are as well. And if given the means to achieve, they will. So some quotes that really resonated with me when I was looking through the stories of refugees, no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than land. That's really important. A lot of people will criticize refugees for even leaving their country. Why are you taking that dangerous journey? Um, in Venezuela, that's a really common thing. Even people seeking asylum in the US, right? That's the perception that our government has of them. A refugee is someone who survived and who can create the future. Refugees are not terrorists. They're often the first victims of terrorism. And this is, I think, another important thing to touch on. A lot of these refugees will come from predominantly Muslim countries. And we have this perception, at least in the United States, you know, Muslims are terrorists, it's a stereotype. And so it's really important to like recognize these stereotypes that we have and to really work through them and recognize that people in these countries are terrorized by terrorists every single day. They're oftentimes the people who experience it the most. They truly are. So yeah, what can we do? We just talked about all these crises, but what's our role? What can we do? We can donate to the UNHCR, Save the Children. There are so many incredible programs out there that are here to support refugees. We just have to donate to them if you are able. Educate and learn. So I really just brushed the surface of the refugee crisis. I just put in the main information that I have on each of these crises, but learn more. There's resources linked in this PowerPoint. There's a lot of TED Talks that I link to on the refugee crisis in general, and really looking up stories of refugees and just kind of learning their perspective and their own story. You can also volunteer. So Paper Airplanes is an online tutoring service if you're interested in doing like online tutoring. Um, they tutor refugees and they set up systems so that way they can gain their education, get their degree. And then you can also check the UNHCR website to kind of learn more. So yeah, that's what we can do. Um, that's kind of the end of what I had on the refugee crisis in general. But does any, like did, any part of this surprise anyone? Was there anything, yeah. Does anyone wanna kinda share like what surprised them? And then for the people on Zoom, you could like put it in the chat box. If anyone wants to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're surprised by the numbers and how high they were? Yeah, definitely. It's not something that gets constant media coverage. It's just kind of background noise. And like, that's how I feel it's perceived. Was there anything else that surprised anyone? That they maybe want to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So like looking back on the pictures of what countries used to look like and how they really are versus like how they're portrayed is definitely really important. Um, I do have like a personal connection to this issue, which is my family is originally from Syria. So I personally have been to Syria when I was really young before the war. So I know what Syria looks like, right? I have a lot of like, friends from Afghanistan. I have friends from these countries. So I know what they look like. But if you don't have a personal connection to these countries, it's really hard when you're looking up information and pictures. This is all that you're getting. Even when I was like putting all the pictures in, like 
wow, this is like the way that these countries are represented is so wholly inaccurate. And oftentimes we also, I think, forget that these countries were well established before the United States was even established, but that's not how it's portrayed at all. Is there anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're surprised by like South Sudan and like the high percentage of women and children that are refugees. Yeah. Um, I'm also surprised in the American school system. I don't know if you guys have more experience, but in like middle school and high school, uh, these topics are, just, like, are not really talked about that much, mm -hmm. um, let alone at, like, at all in high school. Yeah, they really aren't, like these topics are not taught in our educational system whatsoever. I mean, we lack the ability to even talk about the existence of other races in the United States and correctly representing them. So um, it's not really surprising, but you're right. Like it's something that should definitely be addressed. And our history is very Eurocentric, so. Yeah, kind of going off what Max said, like my mom, like education, if any of these countries were ever talked about, it was just like about the war that was going on. Mm -hmm. So I feel like from the beginning, we all as Americans have a misconstrued conception of what we mm -hmm. were and what we were teaching. Yeah, I think that these countries are just like war-torn. That is the main thing. I mean, yeah, even despite, like we just talked about Syria, right? There's several areas in Syria, I mean, close to the government, big shock, that they like function normally, just like live their daily lives. Like this is their new normal. I, I even have family that will come to the US like every year, but then they'll just like return back to Syria because it's become their new normal. It's been 10 years. And in Afghanistan, they've been continuously invaded for 40 years. So yeah, definitely. Does anyone else have any like thoughts or questions at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So you can be a refugee because of economic conditions. That's definitely a cause. But um, are you referring to how uh, people who flee Afghanistan are seen as economic yeah. migrants? Instead? Okay. So, they have different implications in terms of accepting people into your borders as a country. So refugees are asylum seekers, so a country would be hopefully obligated to take them. But if you're just fleeing like an economic crisis, the country is not like obliged to take you, if that makes sense. So you're seeking asylum versus you're not doing so well economically in that country. So it makes a big difference as to whether they're accepting you into their country or not. And that's why a lot of these countries, so Europe, Pakistan and Iran will not take Afghani refugees because they classify them as economic migrants instead of refugees. Thank you for that. I should have clarified. <laughs> Is there anything else? good books on the topic. Um, I can definitely recommend some. Um, I have a resource list actually that I came up with while making the presentation. So I'll definitely send those out. I, even if you look up honestly, like books about refugees, I think that a lot of them, I, I would recommend ones that are like first, put, like first person narratives, right? Because that's how you're gonna get the most genuine understanding. Did you have something? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm definitely. I'm gonna, oh yeah. Oh, you're the chair? Okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Okay, yeah, thanks for telling me. Um, I'm just gonna, everyone can see the chat now, but Grace said that she finds it surprising that so few countries are willing to help refugees, especially those that may have contributed to leading factors in the first place. Example, those who have intervened in hardly beneficial ways. That's also a really good point, Grace. I think a really good example of that too. Um, oh wait, I did not show my screen. A, little bit. Um, a good example of that too, honestly, Saudi Arabia. Like if you wanna read more on that, highly recommend that you do. Saudi Arabia is a big contributor to the instability that you see in the Middle East. They're right there. 
they should be accepting those refugees and they should be doing their part, but they don't. They just really contribute to instability. Um, that's like a whole other thing. But yeah, definitely, that's a really good point. And especially in the United States, like we amplified the crisis in Syria, um, yet we barely take any Syrian refugees. So, does someone else have something I feel like I saw? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys all so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, it's definitely a very, there's so many layers to the topic. There's so many things involved and it's really important to just talk about and learn more. I think I personally wouldn't, I wouldn't know so much if I wasn't so personally like invested in the issue. So yeah, I definitely think it's important to learn more. Just some announcements for you all. So this is our first GM. Thank you all so much for coming. We're hoping that GMs this year will be structured like this where we get to talk about a specific issue, have a discussion about it, really engage with the issue. And then we'll have our next in-person GM in October, and that'll be about mental health, because that'll be Mental Health Awareness Week. So our wonderful, our wonderful directors, Angie and Christina, will lead that. But we'll also have two online GMs this month, so they're gonna be set up exactly like this, but on Zoom. So we have one next Monday, and we also have one the week after that. So some other announcements, committee signups come out tonight. So if you're interested in signing up for a committee, um, you don't have to, but we definitely recommend it. Those will be open for the week. So you'll open the form and you'll see all the descriptions, the contact information of the directors, if you have any questions for them. And it's super easy to sign up. Our first event is this Wednesday. It's the Timmy alumni event. That's also via Zoom. So super easy to just join and get some perspectives from alumni who are out in the workforce or continuing their education. That's Wednesday at 6 p.m. Our school supply donation drive has started, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, continue to donate to that. Um, on our Instagram. On our Instagram. Um, and then there's the uh, like Facebook talking for you who's donating all that. If you want to donate, because all you can do is send them there. You can then tell them what you want to do. But that's all on our Instagram. Basically. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's all on Instagram, so just Venmo Kathleen. Um, the Community Service Initiatives form will also be sent out tonight. So I think, cool. does goal start today? Like this week? Yes. So some amazing programs will start today as well. And then club dues will be online. More info on that later. So those are our announcements. Also send out an email with the slides to this presentation and these announcements listed out again. And there's our slide with our Instagram and our mailing list. So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, We'll stick around for a little bit if you guys have anything you want to talk about. Make sure to grab the stickers and the hand sanitizer. Those are for you. Oh, yeah, the picture. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. And thank you to everyone who joined us online. Um, I hope you guys could hear me. And it was like, okay. Thank you all so much. We're so excited that you guys all joined. <gasps> Bye, Grace. Yeah. Yes, we could hear you, and the Kahoot was such a good idea, because it was super Aww. interaction for those of us that are at home. Thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll send out an email with a recap of the announcements. So yeah, thank you guys. Bye.